We must think critically and not just about the ideas of others. Be hard on your beliefs, take them out onto the veranda and hit them with a cricket bat. Be intellectually rigorous, identify your biases, your prejudices, your privileges. You gave me a shoulder when I needed it. Most of society's arguments are kept alive by a failure to acknowledge nuance. You showed me love when I was we tend to generate false dichotomies and then try to argue one point using two. You help me fight when I... Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nikhil Reddy, and whenever we seem to talk about religion or politics, specifically with our friends, family members, or even strangers, they tend to devolve into what computer scientist Paul Graham calls uniquely useless discussions. And my question is why? Maybe you've seen it yourself. Any discussion online and many times in person about politics or religion degenerates into a bitter argument or larger conflict. More importantly, you don't have to look very far to see how politics and religion have inspired some of the world's worst wars, disagreements, and regimes. Why does this happen, especially with religion and politics, and not with something like physics or film or science or, in general, most other topics? And so today, I want to examine the peculiar and perhaps even contradictory parts about politics and religion and see how we might be able to adjust our mindset in order to have good, substantive, and intellectual conversations about both topics. I think the one thing that's singular to religion and politics and no other topic is the idea that you don't need to have a particular threshold of experience or expertise to talk about them. In fact, in those two cases specifically, we are often upheld in our rightness about them simply due to how many other people believe in what we are saying, not due to some scientific truth or empirical test. In fact, all you really need to talk about religion or politics is a strongly held belief. If you go online, you will never find a thread about physics that will grow as fast as one about religion, because people feel they have to have some sort of threshold of experience to post comments or argue seriously about that. But on religion, you are inherently an expert. The problem exists with politics too. Politics, like religion, is a topic where there's no threshold for experience or expertise in order to express an opinion. All you need is a strong conviction about how the world ought to be governed, and those views may be good or bad, but the perception of those views is purely subjective, as are your opinions about them. And so let's think about this. Why exactly is this the case? Perhaps one reasoning is that both of these topics deal with questions that have no definite answers, so there's no pressure on people opinions. Since no one can be proven wrong about a particular religion or political ideology, then everyone's opinion is valid, and sensing this, everyone kind of lets fly with theirs. But technically this isn't true. There are certainly some political questions that have definite answers, like how much a government policy will cost, or what kind of people it's going to affect, or the more precise political questions that affect certain localities like states or nations in other parts of the world. In fact, I think what's actually at play here is the idea of identity, and here we might be able to make a case for genuine self-improvement. When we think about political or religious ideologies, we are so deeply tied to them that they become a part of our identity, and so it prevents having a fruitful argument or disagreement. In fact, we are by definition partisan, biased, and in some cases prejudiced. Put more generally, you can only have a good, substantive, intellectual conversation about an idea or topic only when that conversation does not engage the identities of any of the participants. What makes politics and religion such minefields is that they engage so many people people's identities. Your religion is largely the result of an upbringing that's lasted 20 or 30 years, likewise with your political beliefs. Ultimately, the purpose of this video is to convince you to remove any label or identity that you may attach to yourself when you want to have a conversation about the world. The most intriguing thing about this theory is that it explains not only what kinds of discussions to avoid, but also how to have better ideas. The more labels that you have for yourself, the more they limit you from having an open-minded and rational discussion with the people around you. Having an identity that you are unwilling to grow and change with time, or at least temporarily suspend, can and will prevent your personal and intellectual growth. And with that, I will leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nikhil Reddy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down below with a like, comment, maybe a subscription to the channel. Last but certainly not least, I will always see you guys in the next one.